last week we talked about understanding the purpose of your room and really understanding the anatomy of the room. We talked about the anchor pieces versus the peripheral pieces, and I had you make a list. Now, if you stopped there, you would just have a glorified shopping list. But creating a home design, an intentional home design, a cohesive home design is more than just creating a list of things that you want and things that you need. Scaling them on levels of importance versus not so important. And today we're really getting into defining your aesthetic. Understanding your aesthetic is critical before you can begin making a really detailed plan. And making a plan is critical before you make a purchase. There are steps involved and today is step two, understanding your aesthetic and we're going to use Pinterest to do that. So grab a notebook, grab a pen, grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. This one is really, really meaty. I am going to link in the show notes um, a video that I posted actually in my Facebook group months and months ago for how to do this. So you might want to go back, you might want to go back and watch that actually. It might be helpful to have the slide. I have some slides that go with it. I will link that video in the show notes. So go back and do that. Also, just a quick plug, my Facebook community, um, I show up every Thursday and I do a teaching for you. So if you would like to have more than once a week understanding of how you can create a home that you love, getting all of your questions answered, come and join us. Um, You can find that at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group course that'll be linked in the show notes too. Okay, let's dive in and enjoy today's show. We grew up with the phrase, home is where the heart is, but our culture has shifted and now the message is, home should be Pinterest perfect. I'm calling BS on that message. Home, it's not about the stuff, it's about the story. And whether you know it or not, your home is a reflection of you and is already saying something. So what is it that you want it to say? Hey, I'm Danny, a former first grade teacher turned home decorator. Going from a dual income to a single income so I could stay home with my babies meant budget, like ramen eating, Goodwill shopping budget, and I learned a few things along the way, like how to bring big style to your home without breaking the bank, and I'm sharing it all with you. Tips, tricks, decor, and design advice so you can learn to tell your story with your style, where you can start living free from the Pinterest perfect trap and start living a life of intention. Welcome to Fig and Farm at Home where we design happy living and where it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. We're back this week on part two of the, but where do I start home design series? Where do I start? (laughs) That's, that is the question. Where do I start when I really have no idea? When I really have this idea in my mind that it costs too much. I have this idea in my mind that my kids are just going to make it messy, so I might as well not start. This idea that I don't know how to put it all together anyway, so I might as well just leave it as it is. The goal is to create a home that you love, a home that you love coming home to, to create a home that tells your family's story, that's a reflection of you, that when you have your friends over and they walk through the door, they think, oh my gosh, immediately, that is you. This screams you insert your name, whatever your name is, it screams you, it is so laden and thick with your your style that it's just apparent everywhere. But beauty isn't just on the walls, right? We know that it's more than that. We know that it's about the people inside. It's about how you take care of each other. It's about so much more than that. But today we're talking about making it pretty. And today we're going to use a tool called Pinterest. <laughs> oh, you guys, Pinterest. I love Pinterest and I hate Pinterest all in the same, all in the same breath. And I think for a lot of us, um, we can get stuck in, into the trap that is Pinterest. We can be searching for one thing and then be finding ourselves an hour later surfacing for air and finding that actually I wasn't even searching or looking at the same thing I started with. It can be a real rabbit hole. And so today I'm going to give you seven tips for how you can use Pinterest as a tool in home design. It's a tool that I use all the time with my clients and it's one that I I, I really strongly encourage you to use. Now if you do not, if you don't use Pinterest, if you're not on Pinterest, maybe I'll convince you that it could be a good reason. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if you are just absolutely no, I don't want to do that, you can do the same thing with Google Images. You can do the same thing with with home decorating magazines. You can do the same thing with any visual image of home design. So when I say Pinterest, if Pinterest isn't your thing, if you're not interested in it, then picture whatever medium you use, like a home design magazine. Picture that. So 
Let's first talk about Pinterest, what it is and what it isn't, for those of you who might have a preconceived notion and might not be using it. So what is Pinterest? The easiest way to think of Pinterest is a visual search engine. So when you're on Google, when you're on Safari, when you're on Firefox, and you Google, if you search something, if you Google something, you will find all kinds of information, right? It's generally in written word, in written form. In Pinterest, it is in visual form. You can search all kinds of things and the results will show up visually. That visual is generally connected to an outside source. So it might link you back to a blog or another resource for where you could get the the written information for it. So for example, if I was searching up chicken casserole recipes, a picture would pop up in Pinterest and then I would click on the link to be able to say, I want to actually find that recipe and follow it. Now, growing up, if I wanted to create a collection of all of the recipes I had collected, I would put it into a file. I would put it in a three ring binder. I might even put them, if they were pictures, I might put them on like a cork board or a mood board, something hanging on my wall. Pinterest has its own storage system. And instead of a file, they're called boards. So you save these images that you want to remember for later. You save them. It's called pinning. You pin it. You pin them onto a board and the board you get to label so it's easy to find whenever you want to find it. That's all information that we're going to need to know if you are a newbie at Pinterest. Okay, what is Pinterest not? Pinterest is not a social media platform. Some of you might think that it is. You can have followers, of course, and you can have, and you can follow people, but it's not It's not a social media platform in the way that Instagram is or Facebook is. You don't collect vanity metrics like you do on Instagram or or Facebook. Um, The likes don't necessarily mean much unless you are a business or an influencer or someone like that and you do want to have, you want to build that account. But for the average user, that doesn't necessarily matter and you can just use it as a digital storage system as a way to keep all of these ideas, the the ideas of inspiration, the ideas of recipes and pictures of home design and outfits and whatever you want in one place. It basically is a is a really nice way to organize to organize that. That's how I started it. Years and years ago, that's when I started using Pinterest. It was just a way for me to um, not have all of these ideas that I wanted to remember clutter up my office space, the ephemera to just take over. And so having a digital storage spot was really great. Now diving just a teeny tiny bit deeper, Pinterest can be public or private. So if I didn't want to have all kinds of people um, having access to whatever it is I'm pinning or saving, I could make those boards private. I could make my files private. So if you were to go onto my account, for example, Fig and Farm at Home, you would see, and it's a business account, so you would see ideas of maybe client projects, maybe living room designs, maybe ideas I have for for the shop, whatever. You would see all of that because it's business related, but what you wouldn't see, you wouldn't see my board that is hairstyles or birthday party ideas or recipes I want to remember. You wouldn't see that because I've I've kept those secret or private. But on the back end, on my side, when I log into my Pinterest account, I can see all of them. Okay, and if you're super inspired by someone's board, you can follow them so that you don't miss anything because maybe you're super inspired by the tacos they create and they have a thousand and one different taco ideas. That would be someone you might want to follow so that you are aware of when they pin, when they create a new taco recipe. Okay, enough about that. That's just the basics in case you just are not aware of what Pinterest is. And if you do have questions, of course, reach out. Remember, if you're not a Pinterest fan or if that just felt super overwhelming, then insert whatever visual media you would use to get ideas. Now, one word of warning here. If you are Googling images, if you're Googling images of blue velvet couches, for example, I guarantee you that at least 80% of the images that pop up will be taking you back to Pinterest. So you might not overtly be using Pinterest, but I bet you you will. (laughs) Okay, so back to it. Okay, so we know what Pinterest is. We know what Pinterest is not. But now I want to prep you for what's to come. Because Pinterest can feel very overwhelming. If you are walking into this process feeling already overwhelmed, me mentioning, hey, use Pinterest could feel 
like fingernails clawing at a chalkboard. It could feel extremely overwhelming. It could also feel like this is going to be a ginormous waste of time. It could also feel like you might have some comparisonitis. You might walk in and think, these are beautiful pictures I'm looking at and I am never going to compare. And I want you to remember these things. One is that I'm going to teach you exactly how to use Pinterest so that you're not wasting time, so that you're not going down the rabbit hole, and so that when it comes time to making your design plan and spending money, you're, you're being really efficient and you're not wasting money. So that is the whole goal with using Pinterest, and we need to do that with some sort of visual field. The other thing I want to caution you with is that, or to remind you, is that the images that we see on Pinterest of course they're beautiful, of course they're lovely, but they are highly curated. Remember that? They are highly curated. A lot of them are taken, if not professionally, they are staged to make it look pretty perfect and to get you to spend a little bit of time, you know, reading the blog or investigating further. Pinterest can be now within the last year is now a shoppable search engine. So you can, not everything is shoppable, but a lot of the items can be. So now it's an advertising tool. So keep all of that in mind as I'm walking you through step by step. Okay, don't deviate. And when I say take a break, I want you to take a break. And there's reasons for that. And we will talk about it in a minute. Okay, here we go. This is pretty meaty. Get your paper out, get your pen out if you don't already have it. And let's get to it. This is going to be really fun. Once you start understanding what your aesthetic is, you're going to be able to, once you understand it, you're going to be able to go into any home design store and forget about just browsing. You're going to be able to pick up the piece with confidence to take home, to insert into your home. You're going to be able to shop your room efficiently and effortlessly. You're going to be able to see the cohesive form take shape. So there's a lot of good benefits to it. All right. Here we go. Number one, we've already decided in last episode, in episode six, we already decided which room we're starting with. We already know which room either drives you most crazy or which room that you've narrowed it down to, right? The one that you'll enjoy most, the one you spend the most time with. However it was that you got to that decision making, we're there. Last week, I used my living room as my example. This week, I'm not. I'm going to use my home office. And that is going to be the room I'm going to referring to in this example. So that is the room. And I am going to spend my time in step number one. I'm going to be searching home offices. It is completely broad and general. My first search is, is very general. But I want you to not just search there. I want you to be deliberate with your time here. So I want you to get out a, a clock and I want you to set the timer. And we're going to limit our time with our search for 20 to 30 minutes because we don't want it to become a rabbit hole. We don't want it to feel overwhelming. We don't want any of that. Now, as you're searching, you're going to come, you're going to see a lot of images. And the images that you see that you are drawn to, I want you to click on those. And you're going to be able to see the area that you can pin. Do that if you like it. Save it. And I want you to create a board, a brand new board, that is whatever room you're working on. For me, it's home office. So I'm going to label it home office. I'm going to save that image. But then there's a way that you can change the description. And what you're going to notice is that the original pinner, the person who created the pin, created the image um, and created the description for that image. You, however, because this is purely for your research, you are going to change that description and you're just going to highlight all of the words and erase them. And you're going to start being super, super specific with what you like and what you don't like within that room. So for example, I have pulled up a, a room with a blue base and it has built-in blue bookshelves and the bookshelves on top are open and the bookshelves on bottom are enclosed with covered doors. There's a ginormous piece of art. It's abstract in between two sets of books, bookshelves sitting side by side. And there's a desk in front of the artwork. There's a an overhead light fixture. And then there's some brass sconces that are hanging above the top of the bookshelf. So I'm giving you a visual example of what I'm seeing. Now, out of that image that I just described to you, I'm going to write down in my description all of the th all of the things that I love or like. I don't even have to love them. All of the things that I like within that room. And I'm going to do the same things with the things that I don't like. So in this particular image, I really love the brass sconces. I really love the overhead light. I love how big it is. I love the large piece of artwork. 
I like the blue, but I don't really like the color of blue, but I like the idea of a big, bold statement. I don't really like the way that the books are arranged on the shelf, that there's more tchotchkes than there are books. I like the big area rug, but I don't like the desk. In fact, I hate the desk. I'm going to write all of that down. And as I'm writing that down, um, when I'm done, I'm going to go and keep on searching. I'm going to look for other home offices. I am not deviating from that search. I am only focusing on the home office. So I am going to find another one that catches my eye. I'm going to save it to my, my board home office, and I'm going to do the same thing, creating a list of things I like, things I love, and things I don't like. And if I really have a strong visceral reaction to something, I am going to make sure I write that in bold, or I'm going to be highlighting that for sure so that I remember it. Because we're, we're not doing this just for fun. We're going to come back to it. Okay, we're going to do that for about 20 to 30 minutes. And I don't want you to create more than 30 pins within your board. Your limit is 30. And if you can knock out 60 in 30 minutes, forget about it. You only get to do 30. 30 might be too high, actually. Maybe 20. Maybe 20 is the better the better number here. The idea is we want to create enough of a generalized visual field so that we can start narrowing down, so we can start seeing the similarities um, in the next step. Okay, so you've just spent 20 to 30 minutes looking at home offices. You've been super general and you're writing down your likes and your dislikes and your loves and your hates and you're writing it all down in the description and you're saving it. And that's it. That's step number one. Step number two, you're taking a break. And here's why. Pretty soon your pictures are all going to start blurring together and you're not going to be able to differentiate between your likes and dislikes. And remember, we're not using Pinterest as a time filler. We're not using it as a way to distract us from something else going on in our life. We're using it as a resource, as a tool. And we are students of style students of design right now. So we're going to be, we're going to respect that role that we're taking on and we're going to give ourselves a break. And I want you to take not just a 10 minute break. I want you to take a break for a day or two. And I'm being serious here. Take a break for a day or two, leave it, walk away, go do something else. And then we're going to come back to step three. In step three, you're going to need some other tools. You're going to need your computer, of course, so you can access all of the things that you created on Pinterest. You're going to need uh, a white piece of paper or two and a pencil. And what I want you to do, what I want you to think about your, your role in this step is that you are, you're an, an investigator. You are searching these pins with a fine tooth comb so that you can start understanding and identifying the similarities between the pins. Okay, here's what it looks like. In my general search in my first step, when I was generally searching home offices, I pinned 30 times maybe 20. I pinned somewhere between 20 and 30 times. And in those 20 and 30 times, there are going to be similarities starting to surface and emerge that you are going to start becoming aware of. For example, I really liked the blue book. And you know what? 17 out of my 20 pins were all blue bookcases. That's telling me something. I also noticed that one of the similarities was I really liked the brass lighting. I really liked large rugs. I really liked shelves that were open on top and shelves that were closed with a cupboard style on bottom. I really liked sconces. So I'm starting to take a look at all of the different boards, or not boards, pins that I pinned in my first board home office. And I am now looking at all the similarities. And I'm not just looking at them. For you, I'm naming them. But right now, I want to use that white piece of paper. I want to use my pen. And I want to differentiate between all of the elements that are starting to stick out to me. So if you can imagine, I created several different lists on my paper or boxes or circles, or however graphically you want to organize these different categories, you're going to categorize. One list is called wall color. One list is office chairs. One list is overhead light fixtures. One list is area rugs. You get the picture. You're going to make a list of all of the different design elements within the room that you are aware of. And now you're going to be looking at each of those 20 or 30 pins that you pinned generally in step number one. You're going to be looking at and identifying the similarities of your likes. Not necessarily your not likes, but your likes. So for example, if 
I'm looking at light fixtures and I have my list that says light fixtures, I'm going to look in those 20 and 30 generalized pins and I'm going to see what were the things I liked about the light fixtures in each one of those. What were the things that I didn't like? And I'm going to write that down. And I know, for example, I really liked brass. I didn't really like the modern light fixture shape, but I liked the brass fixture. So I'm going to put down brass fixture. I'm going to put down not modern. I'm going to put down makes a statement. Those are the things that really stick out to me. I'm going to do the same thing in my category called area rugs. And what I noticed is that I was gravitating in all of those 20 to 30 pins in my first step, I noticed that the ones I gravitated towards were patterned. They were not solid. So I'm going to make sure on my new list under area rugs, I'm going to put down patterned rugs. Now I'm going to pay attention to what those patterns were. Did I like floral? Did I like geometric? What did I like? I'm going to pay attention to that and I'm going to write it down on my area rug list. I'm going to do the same thing for office furniture. I'm going to write down the things that piqued my attention. I really was drawn towards velvet finishes. Velvet is going to go on my office furniture. I really loved the color blue. Not really a, a dusty blue, not really a navy blue, but a kind of like a tealy, aqua, slightly moody blue. I really loved that color. That was the color I really loved the most. I'm going to make sure that I put down the legs that were drawing my attention. I'm going to pay attention to all of those details within those 20 to 30 pins from my first step. Did I like the chunky legs? No, I actually didn't, but I really liked the mid-century sleek line. I liked the style of that furniture, the slim line, the straight lines, the sleek look, and it was velvet. So I'm going to make sure I put that in my office furniture list. I'm going to repeat that for every element that I can, every element that I'm aware of. And that's going to take a lot of time. If you can imagine you're going to do that for maybe different pieces of furniture, lighting, not just overhead lighting, but maybe table lamps, floor lamps, sconces. You're going to do that maybe for artwork. You're going to do that for even the way that things are styled on the shelves or on credenzas or what, whatever room you've chosen. You're going to do that for wall color. You're going to do that for, for plants that you're drawn to, plant holders that you're drawn to. Do you like the, the wicker weave or do you like the ceramic? You're paying attention to all of those details because all of those details together is what is going to define your aesthetic. It's going to be tedious, it's going to be a lot of work, but I guarantee you that this work is going to pay off. You can imagine that this is going to take quite a bit of time. I want you to limit your time period here. If you can manage 40 minutes, great. If you can get it all done in an hour, wonderful. But don't deviate from the plan. Don't go back and start searching more home offices. Don't go back and do that unless you are not able to find similarities that are repeating themselves. If you feel like what you have pinned in that first step is all over the board and you're noticing that you really love sleek, modern, monochromatic, and then you really love boho, you might want to go back and redo num step number one. But most often you are able to complete step number three and move forward. So I don't want you to do that unless you absolutely need to. So you might take 40 minutes. And if you do, wonderful. If you don't and you need to do a little bit today and come back and do a little tomorrow, that's okay. But whenever you are at that point of, of feeling done, I want you to take a break. And this is a sizable break as well. This is a one day break, a two day break, a day, a break for you to just kind of reset because all of those images are going to start muddling together. So that was step four, was taking a break. Step five, now that we have all of those specific elements within your room identified, we know that we like brass light fixtures, we know that we like patterned area rugs, we know that we like blue walls or blue bookcases, we know those specific things. Now we are headed back to Pinterest. And this time we are going to, we are going to search specific design elements based on the list that you just categorized. So for example, in the search bar, I am going to search brass overhead light fixtures. This time when I save it, I am not saving it to my home office. This time I am saving, I'm creating a brand new board and I'm labeling that brass light fixtures. <laughs> I'm being really specific with the label so that I can keep that system identifiable. So I can, when it's time to start purchasing, I can 
identify those easily. Okay, so I'm searching brass light fixtures and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this either because I really could spend an hour looking for brass light fixtures. You are going to know, now that you know that you like brass light fixtures, now that you know that you want them oversized and you know that you don't like super modern, your eye is going to be drawn to the ones that you do like. And I want you to pin, and I only want you to pin about five, five to ten, and I want you in that description box to be really specific again. What you love about this item, what you don't love about it, be really specific. You're going to do that for every element that we created in the list in the graphic organizer for step number, what was that? Step number three. We're going to do the same thing for area rugs. We're going to search printed area rugs. And maybe in that original identification, I, I noticed that I liked blue floral area rugs. So I'm going to search blue floral area rugs and I'm going to search those and I'm going to gravitate towards the five or 10 that I really, really love, and I'm going to pin those, and I'm going to create a brand new board called Area Rugs, or Office Area Rugs, if you want to be more specific. I am going to do that for every element, from the, the categories I created in step number three. So those categories were bookshelves, lighting, area rugs, desks, chairs, table lamps, hardware, coffee tables, whatever those elements were, I am creating a brand new board, and in that board, I am only having five to 10 pins. So now you might have the generalized home office board. And now you have maybe 10 to 15 elements within that office that are more specific. I have a board that's called bookshelves, lighting, area rugs, desks, chairs, table lamps, hardware, all of the things. Those are the components that make up your aesthetic. As you took a general topic like home office and broke it down into more specific items, those specific items now have created your aesthetic, your generalized aesthetic. You know that you're drawn to brass, maybe. You know that you like oversized light fixtures. You know that you like bold colors or floral pattern. Those are the specifics that make up your aesthetic. So what next? What next is step number six. This one's a little bit different, but it's super important that you understand and that you put this lens on before we move forward into purchasing or painting or demoing or anything, any next steps. And the heart of this issue is to really manage your expectations, to really understand the limitations of your own home and where it is you're designing into. And it's honestly a reality check. So let me tell you this story. A few years ago, I had a client who, when we were working together and we were creating Pinterest boards, she was pinning all of these lovely homes and the homes were full of natural light and they had white walls with white trim and white curtains. And like, if you could think 50 shades of white, it was 50 shades of white. It was so airy and bright and inviting and cozy. The couch was white. The carpet was white. There is subtle monochromatic, it was just a monochromatic room that felt really bright and airy and lovely. Uh, the art was light framed, like wood tones that had a whitewash on it with a white canvas background with like taupey, light, light taupey artwork on it. So picture this space and it's just illuminating brightness because of all of the white. When I went to her home, she greeted me at the door. What I saw when I opened the door was brown. Her home read brown. She had brown carpet, brown millwork, brown built-ins, a deep chocolate brown couch with brown pillows on it. She had pretty much brown from floor to ceiling. And when I explained to her that we could create this really lovely white setting, we had to ask a few more questions. And you know, what the process was to create, to go from this brown canvas to this white canvas, which is doable. It's very much doable, but what that would mean for her home. And we took a look at the pictures that she pinned on Pinterest and how bright and airy the windows were because of the, the sheer size. They were two stories tall rather than just one. And she lived in a 1950s, really cute cot, like a cottage. And this home was completely different. It was a two story lofted ceiling, um, type of a home. 
and and it lended itself just in the architecture to bright and airy and hers did not. She really loved the white trim and the white carpet and the white walls. And so I, when I suggested, okay, well, let's take a look at white paints and here's what we'll need to do. And we'll need to paint out the white trim and oh, we probably should do the door too. And that just, we can't just stop at the living room. It's going to be carrying over into other rooms throughout the home. The project list for her got overwhelming. It got too much. It felt too too much before it even began. And she started beginning to see the limitations of her own home. When we talked about a white rug and a white couch, we mentioned, oh, you have a dog and your dog is, you like your dog to sit on the couch and you like your kids to have movie snacks. How will you feel when you have a white couch and kiddos having their friends over with movie snacks? And she didn't like that plan. It meant for us that we went back to the drawing board But that was really good. That was okay because we asked the right questions in order for her to understand the limitations, not even the limitations, but the reality behind her space. We ended up going back. We used her brown couch. We didn't change the flooring, didn't change the walls, but we we lightened it up in other ways and it became bright and airy in its own way. It's possible, but how do you make that happen when what you're pinning is not realistic. So checking those pins against reality and the confines of your situation is a step that should not be missed. So here are some questions to ask in order to do that. When you're looking at the Pinterest pins, ask yourself, am I drawn to the elements within the room that are attainable? Are they architectural details? And does my home have those architectural details? Are the changes that I want to have made that are on the Pinterest images, are those changes realistic? And are they within my wheelhouse or my partner's wheelhouse? Or do can I do that myself or do I have to ask someone to do it for me, to hire someone to do it for me? How are those changes going to be made? Can I achieve the look of the room in that picture with elements I already have in my own room? in my own home? What changes need to be made in the room to be able to pull the room together? Like, is it just painting? Is it adding millwork? Is it changing millwork? Is it changing outdoors? Is it changing out hardware? Is it doing more than changing the light fixture? What, what is, what are the changes that need to be made from my home to make my room have a feeling and look like the, the pins I've just pinned? Like all of those specifics, the aesthetic that I just described what changes need to happen and are those changes attainable? Asking yourself those questions is critical and might be really upsetting. Sometimes the answer can be really upsetting. Thankfully with my client, it wasn't. We were able to go back to the drawing board. She was able to hear what I had to say and the the feedback that I had to say in maybe redirecting the plan. So think realistically about what plan you have in mind what plan it is that you want to create and the aesthetic that you've already identified, think about that and how realistic are those things to make happen. Now, if you find that you were pinning all kinds of architectural details, like if you can imagine a brick wall in city loft loft spaces with iron framed out windows, and you live in the suburbs of a city that has builder grade homes, you probably don't have brick walls or iron wrapped windows. <laughs> you might want to think about that. And if that's your case, then go back to that element, go back to the, the broader category, home offices or living room or whatever your broader category is, and now look specifically for that element that didn't quite match up the brick wall texture or the iron wrapped window texture and be looking now for an alternative. Okay, so what do we do next? What are the next steps for this? The next steps, we're going to take our our aesthetic that we just defined today, and we're going to take our um, purpose for the room that we defined last week, and we're going to marry those two, and we're going to come up with a purchasing plan. We're going to come up with a what we need. We're going to be more specific on our to-do list, what our our shopping list is, and when it is that you need to purchase in order to make the biggest impact first. That's happening next week, and you're not going to want to miss that. All right, girls, if you have questions, please reach out. If you want to know more specific, if you want a guide, I am happy to be your guide. Book a phone call with me, figandfarmathome.com, underneath the tab, book a call. No, underneath the tab, work with me, and then it's book a call. I can help you walk through that. Or if this just sounds overwhelming and you want someone to do it for you, this is what I do. 
helping clients understand their aesthetic using Pinterest images, or if not Pinterest images, images that they've collected through home decorating magazines, Google images, or the like. You can find different ways to work with me under the work with me tab on figandfarmathome.com. Packages starting as low as $150 for the room edit. That one is basically a, you want to do all the work, you just want to be told what to do, all the way to full service. So you can find all of those on figandfarmathome.com underneath the tab, work with me. All right, girls, until next time, see you soon. Hey, real quick before you go, if you learned something new or found value in today's podcast, Would you head over to iTunes to Fig and Farm at Home and leave a review and subscribe to the show? That would be awesome. And if you'd like to connect with my community of mamas who are learning to be intentional storytellers within their own homes, join us at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. There's always more room at the table. See you soon.